Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a former Boeing 737 pilot and welcome to the next tutorial for the iFly Boeing 737 MAX. In this tutorial we are going to deal with the FMC setup and I'd say we are going to go right into it. So, first things first, let's go ahead and bring up our flight plan. Setting up the FMC is directly connected to the flight plan itself, so let's go ahead and have a quick look at what we are going to do. We are sitting in Las Vegas over here, flying over to San Francisco on the United Flight 2356 on the 737 MAX 8. Our cruise level is flight level 360, which is the optimum level according to Simbrief. Our cost index will be 30, as we can see on the top corner over here. Now, moving down a little bit, we can find our route down here. And last but not least, going into the end of the flight plan, we can find the en route map, including the significant weather, which as you can see is clear today, no significant weather around our airport or our route. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we are going to click on the FMC button and then we are going to go on to the IDENT page. Over here we check that we've got the correct airplane model over here, so 737-8 for our 737 MAX 8. We check the engine rating equals what we have installed in our aircraft and we make sure that our database is current and active. So going further down from here, our next step is to go to the position init page. Now over here we are going to enter our IRS position. Now some airlines want the pilot to enter the reference airport first, so we are going to enter Kilo Lima Alpha Sierra for Las Vegas and put that up here. Now we are going to set the position according to the IRS, uh, according to the GPS position. So click the next page button and then you can copy the GPS left position from down here. If there is no GPS position shown over here, normally you just need to wait a little bit and then the position is going to come up because it does need a little while for the aircraft to acquire the GPS position after the initial electrical power up. So let's go back to the position in page one and then we can click the um, set IRS position button and insert the IRS position in here. Next up we're going to click on the route prompt and you can see that our departure airport has already automatically been filled into the scratch pad based upon what we have entered on the previous page. Now there is several different options of how you can insert the route. The easiest one is just to click the flight plan request and then your Simbrief flight plan is going to be uplinked. Since that is a little bit easy though, let's talk about the manual entry today since there are still many airlines that do not do automatic flight plan uplinks but where the pilots have to enter them manually. So we're going to enter our departure airport into the origin field and our destination which is Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Oscar San Francisco in the destination. The flight number field is the call sign of the aircraft. So in our case we can see that up here United 2356. So we're going to type UAL2356 and we're going to insert that. Now don't confuse the flight number with the call sign. You always have to put the call sign in here and not the flight number. So the flight number just to give you an example over here would be UA2356. The call sign is UAL2356. The reason we need to be careful about this is because this call sign is transmitted to your transponder and therefore to air traffic control. So make sure that you enter the actual call sign in here. Next up we click the departure arrival key, click on departure and now we can enter our departure runway. Strolling down in the flight plan we are departing Las Vegas of runway 26 right via the Joker 3 departure towards Cano. So let's select runway 26 right. Then we select the Joker 3 and the Canal Transition. From here we go back onto Route and then onto the next page and in here we can start entering our route. We can see that we are flying from Cano direct to Rasmi. So let's go ahead and enter Rasmi on here. 
If you just want to enter a direct, you simply take the waypoint and put that on the right hand side over here. If you want to fly via an airway, you enter the airway on the left and then the waypoint name on the right. So, since that is already our complete route, we can continue by entering our arrival route. So we click departure arrival once again and now we select the San Francisco arrivals. It is going to be an ILS approach. Now, the flight plan says 28 left. However, we are going to make it runway 28 right since that is what the real world 8 is. says that I have looked up off screen over here. Our arrival is the Diamond 5 arrival, which we can select. And then we take the Rasmi transition that we have available up here. Last but not least, we also have the approach transition. And for that one, we got to have a quick look into our charts. So let's go ahead and bring up the Navigraph charts down here as well. Now, this is our Diamond 5 arrival. And you can see that this one leads, leads us all the way to Archie. So what we are going to do is we will select the Archie transition up here. Next up, let's go back to the route page and click the next page button so that we can cross check that our entire route is accurate and matches the expected route from our flight plan. So basically we go over this, make sure, okay, Joker 3 towards Kano, which we have on the top line, then direct to Rasmi, we have that on the second line, and then Diamond 5 arrival for the ILS approach from May 28 right is in there. When all of that is checked, we are going to hit the activate button, but we do not press execute just yet. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and go over to our performance initialization. On the performance init page, we are going to start from the bottom left and just make it that reverse U. So cost index is first, and that is cost index 30, as we can see on the top of the flight plan. So cost index 30 goes into here. The reserve fuel is the alternate fuel plus the final reserve fuel. Now in our flight plan, we have that added up down here. In other flight plan formats, you might have to select that manually. Always round the fuel up, so 3,125 pounds becomes 3.2 for our reserved field. The zero fuel weight is going to be filled out according to the flight plan, 131.1. We're going to leave the plan fuel field empty so that the system can automatically sense what it has on board. And then we move on to our cruise alt. And that is the initial planned cruising altitude. Note that especially in Europe, Simbrief might often plan several different step climbs in the first couple of stages of the flight. If that happens, take the one that you really intend to cruise at at first. So in our case, flight level 360 which we are going to insert up here. In the cruise wind field, we are going to insert the wind at the top of climb, so 351 at 32. 351 slash 32. And the ISA deviation is the deviation from the standard atmosphere at the top of climb and is located in our flight plan over here, so plus 7. I'm going to type 7, include that over here. Last but not least, if there is a possibility that you have to level off at the transition altitude, which for example is the case in uh, Germany, where most initial climbs of airports is 5,000 feet and the transition altitude is also 5,000, then you would add one feet to the transition altitude number that you have in the FMS. In our case in the USA we can keep 18,000, but if you were for example in Europe or in Germany where the transition altitude is 5,000, then, then you would type 5,001 into here. From here we continue to the N1 limit page and if you have an aircraft that is fitted with the non-aspirated TAT probe, you must enter the outside air temperature on the top right field over here. You can do that by entering slash and then the uh, temperature, for example slash 23. If you have an aircraft that is fitted with the aspirated TAT probe, so where the temperature shows automatically, then you don't need to do that. But this is an important step that you must carry out on aircraft equipped with a non-aspirated TAT probe. From here we move on to the takeoff page and then on to the next page. 
and we ensure that the acceleration height and the thrust reduction height are set correctly. This will be important for a takeoff conducted using VNAV. So most departures are flown using noise abatement departure procedure number two. And in that you accelerate at 1000 feet above the ground and reduce your thrust at 1500 above the ground. So make sure that you enter 1000 into here. If there is a special requirement to do noise abatement procedure 1 or something non-standard, you will find that in the general charts of your um, airport briefing. In that case, for example, noise abatement procedure 1 would have an acceleration height of 3000 feet, while the thrust reduction is kept at 1500 in any case. For aircraft equipped with a cutback option, arm that as needed, but the vast majority of airlines and airports do not use that option. So that is not something we are going to worry about right now. Last but not least, you can enter the runway wind and the slope in here, but this is not necessary for standard procedures. Once we have completed the takeoff reference page, we can move down to the legs page and we are going to cross-check our standard instrument departure. So let's go ahead and take out our departure charts and cross-check that anything we have in the FMS actually matches our chart. So we are going to depart via the Joker 3 departure out of Las Vegas. And looking at the um, textual description of the routing of Romay 26 right, we're going to climb on the heading 159 to intercept course 249 towards Rudy. So over here we've got the runway heading 259 to intercept 249 inbound to Rudy. Cross Rudy at or above 4000, which we have on the right hand side there. And at or below 230 knots. And look at that, the 230 knot restriction is actually missing. So let's go ahead and enter that manually. That's 230B slash, and then you can enter that on the waypoint over here. So, then we continue on track 189 towards cells, which is at or below 8,000 feet. So we've got 189 in motor cells at or below 8,000 feet. Then on track 197 towards Magneto, so that's 197 Magneto, and then track 260 towards Kruger at or below 11,000 feet. So we've got 260 Kruger at or below 11,000 feet. Then on track 260 towards Joker, and we have 260 inbound to Joker. So, that is the um, initial climb of our SID. Now if we have a look at the actual graphical representation, we can somewhat see what that is going to look like. So, straight ahead over here, Rudy, left hand turn, Seltz, Magneto, Kruger, and then on towards Joker. From Joker we are going to fly the transition towards Kano, so that's going to be Grimms, Deadpool, Biker, and we have Grimms, Deadpool, and Biker, and then via KG towards Kano, and we have KG and Kano. So, the top altitude for this one is flight level 190, and if we know that at this point already, we can go ahead and dial that into our MCP. So let's put flight level 190 into here. Last but not least, we are going to go on to the fix page, and over here we are going to enter our engine out routing. So, for Las Vegas, the engine out routing is a little bit of a special one, but let's go ahead and have a look into it. In general, if you're looking for information on engine out routings, I can very much recommend the website of fellow YouTuber Blackbox711, and he's got a wonderful app that um, that has a lot of different engine out routings available. So let's go ahead and have a very quick look into that. So this is Blackbox's website that's on blackbox711.com. Then you go into the web app. And over here, you can go ahead and select the airport. Now, okay, so let's enter Las Vegas, hit execute, and then we can find our engine failure procedures down here. And off from a 26 right, the engine failure is as follows. Track 194 towards 3DME Las Vegas, 
and then a right hand turn on track 012. At 12 DME, right turn towards Linden. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we can enter that into our FMS. So, initially, we proceed on the um, track 194 towards 3 DME from Las Vegas. So that's going to be Lima Alpha Sierra. And that's going to be Las Vegas, the top one. And then we're going to enter a 3 degree ring. So we enter slash 3, put that onto here, and now we have a 3 mile ring around the Las Vegas VOR drawn on our nav display, as you can see over here. Next up, remember, we are going to continue on the track 012 until 12 DME Las Vegas. So let's also enter the 12 DME point into here. At 12 DME, we're going to fly direct to Linden. So let's enter Linden over here. And I have probably done a mistake since that is too far away. It's Lima November, Delta India November. Like that. Alright, Linden. And here it is. So the last thing we can do in order to complete this particular part of the setup is to try and find a holding for Linden. And holdings are normally nicely available on the en route charts. So let's go ahead and give that a quick try. So let's try the search function LNDIN. And here is that waypoint. Looks like there is no holding defined over here, maybe on the IFR load chart. Nope, there is actually no holding published over here. So in that case, we are simply going to hold at the present inbound course and that's it. Making our life about as easy as it gets possible. So, this concludes our basic setup of the FMS. Now. We have everything entered in here except for our takeoff performance. But we are not going to enter the takeoff performance just yet. That will be done later as we also handle our load sheet. And that is going to be for a separate dedicated tutorial. So with this, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this one interesting. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, why not consider a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.